My name is Charlotte Reingold, and I am in Mark Carey's class. So I would like to begin my presentation with a quote from Charles Lerner, who is a scholar who studies proper rights of indigenous peoples in Southeast Asia. So he writes, translations occur within context of power. So that leads me to an explanation of my title, How Translations Disempowered. So the, the parentheses lend themselves to multiple readings. So you can read it as disempower, empower, which is just falling away, or any way that you like. So just this idea that there are many things that translation does and can do. So to begin, I'll talk about translation and how it relates to identity and culture. So um, translate, or sorry, culture and language are inseparable. There's this constant feedback loop of language and forming culture and forming language, and that you can't really have one without the other. Language helps to determine, not only describe, but to determine cultural norms, cultural values, and as well as cultural boundaries, where one culture ends and another begins. So cultural identity, we've seen at this conference, is a huge part of climate change politics. So this is important because this cultural identity describes who is affected and how. We've seen that indigenous groups can face, can face high risks um, due to climate change and climate change impacts. So being able to express what is at stake can be really important to these conversations so people can understand it's not just the sea ice, it's not just this animal population that's being affected. A lot of people and their cultures are being affected as well. So, and then inequality of languages is part of the post-colonial or colonial world order that we're currently living. So English is very highly privileged. And English is its own cultural universe that comes with a lot of historical baggage, especially with this topic. And it has a lot of values that are really implicitly embedded within it. So some that are especially pertinent to this conversation are the value of science and this human versus nature dichotomy that we see coming up again and again that really is very different from the views that indigenous cultures take, where um, nature and humans are much more intertwined and the idea of science is really very different. So how does translation relate to climate change? So indigenous groups seek to participate in governing bodies related to climate change. So there's a huge amount of communication that needs to happen. There's also this really strong desire for these groups to be at the table. They want to be heard. So there's an issue of representation. It's an issue of whose voices are being heard and whose voices aren't being heard. Um, so there's this, there's this necessity for translation. And it's not just on a word-to-word -word basis, but a lot of cultural concepts that we see coming through need to be translated, but yet they need to stay true to the language and the culture that they're coming from. So, and then thirdly, we see like threats to land affecting culture. So when cultural identity is tied to the land and the land is at stake, then everything is at stake. So this is why language and culture are really very important to environmental changes. So I'm gonna talk about how translations can potentially disempower. So first of all, the cultural hegemony of English. Um, English is a very powerful language in our world today. And the transfer of material into English can be a really highly politicized act. Like I was saying, because of the sort of rough history English has had in relating to other cultures. So it's its own cultural realm, and it's a cultural realm that has not been very kind to indigenous people in the past. So it can be this question, why do we want this material to go into a language that hasn't really respected us as a whole in history? And then there's also um, this idea that certain things can be erased in translation through translations that assimilate the material into this cultural universe of English. So what will happen is that there's some form of reduction or exclusion because of the, um, the material from the source language being put into the target language, in this case, English. So lost in translation can really be a huge, just a huge deal. So, and then um, language, uh, sorry, translation theorist Lawrence Mnuti says that there's some ethnocentric violence that is inevitable when translations happen. And I think that's especially true when we're looking at indigenous culture being translated into English. And then thirdly, if a translator is an author because of the just huge amount of decisions they have to make just with each sentence, then who writing, who is writing 
matters. So when you have non-indigenous translators, that can have a big impact on how the material is received by an English speaking audience. So in terms of empowerment, I really believe that translations can do more to preserve the cultural identity and the cultural essence of the, of the languages that they're coming from. So this same translation theorist, Lawrence Veduti, describes these as translations of resistance. These are translations that really strive to make the English speaking audience work to understand the source um, culture and the source language. So this, I can't really tell you what this looks like because there's a level of artistry and poetics that comes into this that would really change depending on the material that is being translated, who is translated, where it's coming from, but there's a lot of, there are a lot of other techniques that can be considered that are not just word-to-word -word translation. I think a lot of you have had an experience where word-to-word -word translation can be really frustrating and really limiting. So we need to open it up and think about other ways that are slightly, that are more creative, that you can, when you can transfer this material in a different way, that's going to stay more true to where it came from. And so then, there's also this aspect of indigenous authors. So it's really, I think indigenous researchers and just indigenous people are in this really great position where they have this in-depth understanding of their own culture, but then a lot of the time they also have a really good understanding and knowledge of English. So they are in a position where they can translate better than the non-indigenous person, maybe like an anthropologist who comes in to the community and works to learn but we'll never understand it the way that the same as a person who grew up in it. So because of all this, translation can really be a political tool. So it, I really believe that it can lead to improved quality of cross-cultural communication, and that because of this improved cross-cultural communication, that there are going to be solutions that are more amenable to the community. It all goes back to understanding what does the community want, what does the community need, and understanding it and being able to meet in the middle so that the cultural universe of English doesn't smother the needs of the community, doesn't overwhelm them, but it allows both of them to come through and to work together. together. And then I also believe that it will allow for a deeper collaboration and just a better explanation of how these divergent cultural science systems, English and then different indigenous languages, how they can come together um, to help explain each other. So I'm going to go back to my example of science and then traditional ecological knowledge, which has come up a lot. So we, there's a lot of talk about how these two can really work together, and that understanding has to come from both sides and has to go both ways. And so that's where translation is really going to become important, so everybody can learn about everybody else. And I also believe that translation can be a really useful tool to help navigate some of the linguistic and cultural obstacles that um, indigenous researchers face and also people who are trying to speak on the behalf of indigenous peoples or just who are trying to get involved. Understanding sort of the power politics of language can be really useful in thinking about what you say and how you say it and just thinking about where the material you're reading comes from. It didn't just become, it doesn't just magically transfer it into English. There was a really huge process that went into that that I think needs to be further interrogated so we can understand the politics of the writing and the power structures that came into play. Thank you very much.